Hi, in this video we will be looking at depreciation and getting an introduction to depreciation in an accounting concept. So to kick it off, let's look at our textbook definition of depreciation. And this is the systematic allocation of the depreciable amount of an asset over its useful life. And so we've got some sort of buzzwords just thrown into this definition, but it's simply saying that an asset over time will decrease in value and we're going to have to allocate this depreciable amount or the amount of depreciation over the course of an asset's useful life over the course of time that we're actually using our asset. So to look at this in a bit more detail let's move on to the next bullet point which says that depreciation reflects the fact that a non-current asset and remember, this is just an asset that we're using over a long period of time to generate revenue. An asset will wear out over time. And this will mean that the value of an asset decreases. So what are some of the reasons why we have to depreciate an asset? Why does an asset reduce in value over time? Well, the obvious one is usage. The obvious example is a car, and this is often the one used in many textbooks, that just as soon as we drive our car out of a car dealership, it's going to decrease in value quite substantially because it goes from being a new car to being a used car, so it's no longer worth anywhere near what it was just before this one usage. So we need to depreciate the value of this car because it's now used. Equally wear and tear, sort of tied in with usage as we use our car, we might say get some dents, some scratches on it, and on the interior we might it might get dirty and so on. So a bit of wear and tear is obviously going to decrease the value of a car. A car without scratches and dents is going to be worth more than a car that is scratched. Perhaps not tied in so much with the car example, but we could also have depletion of an asset. So we can think of, say, a mine or a quarry. And if over time we're digging out lots of gold or diamonds or whatever we might find in a mine, the mine itself, the non-current asset that is a mine, just a an area of land underground, that is going to decrease in value because we're depleting the resources contained inside the mine. So we'll have to depreciate due to that. Tied in with these is time. Obviously all of these do rely on time passing in order to use and deplete our asset, but over time of our, an asset can decrease in value. And the final one is obsolescence. And if you're not sure what this term means, it may be say becoming outdated is a better phrase we can use for it so say if we have a piece of software or say we own the old iphone and then a new one gets released well our asset itself may not have changed at all but there is now a new better more up-to-date version of the asset so this is going to mean that our asset actually decreases in price an iphone say 3gs you could get a brand new iphone 3gs but it's going to be worth less than it was before because there are now so many new iPhones which have new and updated software and uh, hardware as well. So these are a few reasons why we need to depreciate an asset. So depreciating our non-current assets will help to match the cost of a non-current asset to the revenue that it generates. So a non-current asset, as we've defined non-current assets, as being long-term assets, they generate incomes over a long period of time. Some of the cost, say, that is going into this non-current asset needs to be matched against this income that is a long way in the future. And this ties into the accruals concept where we're matching incomes to expenses, and we discussed this in the previous video. And so we need to depreciate and record a depreciation charge on an annual basis. So every year we apply some sort of depreciation, how much has our asset decreased in value over the course of a year. And this allows us to better reflect how much income the asset is producing. And over time, as our asset gets worn out and it gets depleted, it might actually earn us less income 
So we need to reflect that and say that our asset is not worth as much as it was before, so we apply some sort of depreciation term. If we go into a bit more detail, we'll note that non-current assets are recorded in the statement of financial position. So if we reduce the value of an asset, we're going to reduce the value in the statement of financial position. And we know that we have double entry bookkeeping in accounting, so this depreciation is going to be, re be recorded in two places. And so the second place we record this is we increase our expenses in the statement of profit or loss. So our depreciation is a cost or an expense. The penultimate point that we'll make here is that we depreciate most of our assets. Um, we'll say our non-current assets or so long-term assets. So if we have a machine or a building, even though we may say that buildings can be around for even hundreds of years, we'll still depreciate them. It, it may not depreciate very quickly. And we may think of a building as increasing in value over time, like houses, but that's often just the land that the building is stood on will increase in value. The building itself, we still need to depreciate, say the walls and the roofs on a building. They're gonna slowly wear out over time and so we need to depreciate this asset. However, we do not usually depreciate land, as this is viewed from an accounting standpoint as having an infinite life. So the land that we own, if we own a field, we don't need to depreciate this, even though it is an asset that a business will own, because it's viewed as being infinite. Now, of course, in however many years, the sun might expand and blow up and destroy all the land on Earth, but accountancy or in accounting we don't tend to look that far and we just assume that our land has an infinite life so we don't need to depreciate land um, as a general rule of thumb the final thing to note is when we begin depreciating an asset and this is when it is available for use so we can often think of this as just when we buy the asset we will start using it but this is a very specific time when it's available for use. There are some circumstances where we will buy an asset, but we can't actually use it yet. Uh, let's say that we have to wait for it to be delivered for us and then we can start using it. And there are some other examples of this, but let's just remember this definition that we start depreciating when it is available for use. And this sort of makes sense because of the reasons that we start to, the reasons why we depreciate something uh, the key one is going to be usage of it. So we wait till we can use the asset before we start depreciating it. So that will round off our introduction to depreciation. Please do leave a like if this video was at all useful. Make sure to check out the accounting playlist for more videos like this one. And subscribe to add some econ to your subscription feed.